Okay, this is one of four videos I have on this standard now. Uh, this is the sixth grade standard, um, Common Core standard, in the number system domain. I have done other videos on the greatest common factor, on the least common multiple, and on multiple of the sum. This particular video is going to be about distributed property and just trying to explain what the distributed property means, what it is, how you use it, so that way this part of the standard can be done well. And that way, um, in fact, this video should be watched before you watch the video on multiple of a sum. Uh, to distribute something, think about when we think about distributed property, we're just talking about distributing something. Like you would distribute uh, pieces of paper to everybody in the room. You want to pass one out to everybody in the room, then you would be distributing one piece of paper to every single person in the room. Uh, if you think about that, then you'll understand really what you're doing when you're distributing the multiplication of a number in a problem like this. But before I actually show you how to use the distributive property, what I'd like to do is, um, is, is take a problem like this and just show you a couple different ways of solving it so you understand what the problem means. A problem like this um, means that you are multiplying 3 times the quantity, the total quantity of 2 plus 6. So one way to write that out would be 3 times the quantity of 2 plus 6, which is, when you add that up, is 8. And then now 3 times 8 would equal 24. That's what that problem means. Now another way to think about this same problem is 3 times the quantity of 2 plus 6 means you're taking the quantity of 2 plus 6 and you're adding it three times. So you have the quantity 2 plus 6 three times. So if you were to add all these numbers up, taking each parentheses, set of parentheses at a time, you have 2 plus 6 equals 8 plus 2 plus 6 equals 8 plus 2 plus 6 equals 8. And then if you add 8 plus 8 plus 8, you would get 24, because that is also the same thing as 3 times 8. You have 8, 8, and 8. So when you see an expression written in this way, those are two ways to think about the expression. Now, if we had to solve this problem 3 times 2 plus 6 using the distributive property, that is just another way to think about this problem, and it's another way to solve this problem. The distributive property would take 3, this quantity of 3 here, and it would distribute the multiplication of 3 to the 2 and then the 6. So just for a second, I want to go back to this previous page and show you this problem right here, or this, when we wrote it out this way, when we wrote out the quantity of 2 plus 6 three different times, what we see is, I'm going to put this in a different color, let's do purple, we see 1, 2, 3, 2's, and then we see 1, 2, 3, 6's. So you can hold that in your head for a second. If we did 3 times 2 and then 3 times 6, we would be holding true to this written form of the, of the problem. So now let's distribute the multiplication of 3 to the 2 and then to the 6, and I'll show you how you write that out. So you'd write 3 times 2 plus, because that is the operation that's in the parentheses, and now we're going to distribute 3 times 6. 3 times 6, and then if you were to multiply that out, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 3 times 6 is 18, and then 6 plus 18 equals 24. So we get the same answer, 24, that we got here and here when we solved it two other ways. But what we did is, instead of adding up 2 three times and then adding up 6 three times, we just did a shortcut. We used the distributive property to multiply the 3 times 2, which is the same thing as adding up 2 three times, and then 3 
times 6, which is the same thing as adding up 6 three times. All right, now let me just give you one, just one of many reasons why you might use the distributive property. Let's say you had the problem 4 times 36. Let's say you had to buy something, a quantity of 36. Let's say there were bags of M&Ms, and in each bag there were 36, but you wanted to know how many M&Ms you had in total if you bought four bags, but you couldn't multiply four times 36 in your head quickly. But what you could do is you could break up the, actually, let me back up, make that in blue. You can break up the 36 into parts, and then you can distribute the multiplication of four to the parts to figure out what the total quantity would be. Let's say we had 30 um, plus 6. We know that 36 can be broken up as 30 plus 6. I can much more easily multiply 4 times 30 um, and then 4 times 6 than I can if I just did 4 times 36. That is if I'm just doing it quickly in my head. So if I wanted to use the distributive property to more easily do the multiplication in my head, I can take 36, break it down into 30 plus 6, then multiply 4 times 30, and then multiply 4 times 6, and add the 2. So if I did 4 times 30, I would get 120. And if I did 4 times 6, I would get 24. And if I add the 2, I would get 144. That is a lot easier to get to than 4 times 36, if you're doing this in your head. <laughs> I know it means you're writing more on the, uh, on, the, on the table here, but you in your head, it's easier to multiply with these uh, smaller numbers, possibly. And that would be one reason why you might use distributive property.